Well, good evening. Good evening. Good evening to you. Uh, it's a joy and an honor to be with you tonight. Uh, just a, a quick introduction. My name is Austin Welter. I'm the senior pastor at Zion Wayside. You guys heard Wayside before? Oh, yeah. Uh, there's some that haven't, even though they've lived around here their whole lives. Uh, we're just a little south of here. Uh, we got a church and a school, and uh, it's a joy to be with you worshiping this Advent season. Uh, it's also a great encouragement to hear um, that uh, your pastor, Pastor Pat, had the successful surgery and is doing well and recovering. Uh, and so it always makes it a little bit easier to come here and um, be in this moment with that encouraging news. And I know that he is looking forward to getting back here and doing what he loves. And it sounds like he's going to be back here sooner than later. Uh, and so that is great to hear. Um, we continue through our the, your Advent series. Uh, this evening, our theme is Jesus as Shepherd, and our theme verse for tonight is from John 14, these well-known words that Jesus speaks. He says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Let's begin as together we sing our opening hymn now. Please stand for our invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We light the third candle on the Advent wreath to rejoice in the name of Jesus, our shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd who gave his life to save us. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus is our shepherd guide us and shelter us with his presence now and forever. The lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The Lord is my shepherd. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us confess our sins to God, asking his forgiveness for the sake of our good shepherd who came to seek and find the lost. We confess. Almighty God, we do not follow our shepherd as we should. We wander and become lost, following our own desires and the temptations of the world around us. We have sinned against you in our thoughts, words, and actions. Have mercy on us and forgive us for the sake of Jesus. God, God has had mercy on us. Jesus, our good shepherd, laid down his life to save us and rose from the dead in victory. I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. He restores my soul. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd who came to seek and save the lost. 
You laid down your life to pay the debt of sin we owed, and in triumph you took up your life again, defeating all enemies who would destroy your precious flower. Lead us by your spirit to follow closely in your footsteps, especially in these busy days as we prepare to celebrate your birth in Bethlehem. Guide us, Good Shepherd, until that day when you return to take us into your sheltering presence forever. Amen. Please be seated for our following hymn. Testament reading this evening is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And our epistle reading is from Revelation chapter 7. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. I invite you to please stand for our reading of the Holy Gospel. Our Gospel reading is from John chapter 10. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down. And I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. Please be seated as we continue with our sermon hymn.
Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, some of the most well-known, familiar words in all of scriptures, you have heard them before, you have read them before. Perhaps it's been at a funeral as you have gathered in this place to find comfort in the promises of God. Maybe it's been in a distressing time in your own life and you opened up the pages of God's word and found yourself reading those words of Psalm 23. Those well-known words, the Lord is my shepherd. And there's a reason they are so well known and sought after so often. Because they are some of the most comforting, reassuring, peaceful, encouraging, and hopeful words that we can find in all of Scripture. Most importantly, they are true words. And they're true words for you. I mean, right now, at this moment, as we say, the Lord is my shepherd... We're not just looking forward to a future promise. It's not just a remembrance of what God has done. But we're saying right now and in this moment, at this place, the Lord is my shepherd. And don't give in to that temptation where you think, well, yeah, that's probably true for, you know, someone else or someone more dedicated or who serves more, gives more, is more familiar with scripture, has been to more Bible studies. He's talking to you now, today, not just the person you're sitting next to or you have in mind. But you can confidently say, the Lord is my shepherd. And I can say that to you with confidence, because I know what Christ has done for you through the cross and gifted you in your baptism. So the Lord is my shepherd, has been, is now, and always will be. And what we get to see as we take a look at this text of Psalm 23, we hear those words, the Lord is my shepherd, and then what does this mean? We ask that good Lutheran question, what does that mean that the Lord is my shepherd? And what we find detailing in this text, all that results of that, the hope, the joy, the encouragement, the strengthening of faith that we find in those words because we say the Lord is my shepherd. And the first thing we hear right off the bat, I shall not want. You lack nothing in the Lord. Nothing. I shall not want, you have said. In all times, at all places, you can say, God is enough. And you think we need to hear that now more than ever? I mean, there, there are several things. Yeah, I know, in your lives and in mine. Things, experiences, places, routines, traditions, people, something that we were looking forward to that has been taken, replaced, or lost because of the circumstances around us. On top of that, we got worries and concerns about the election and our nation and what does the future look like. And how do you as a Christian react? What do you say to these things? And see, this is where the rest of the world can run around with its hair on fire, grow in anxiety and fear and distress and not know what's going to happen and be driven to despair, you, dear Christian, you get to just take a deep breath and say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. God is enough. I have everything that he has ordained to give me, and I have all that I need. See, you are sheltered by the shepherd. You're in his care, in his fold, as he protects you. And think about this, just in terms of sheep. You imagine that sheep being out in the pasture, the shepherd being near it. Is there anything that that sheep has to worry about? I mean, will it worry? Yeah, we do. Is there anything, though, that that sheep has to worry about with the shepherd standing by its side? Is there any predator or threat that can do it with the shepherd by its side holding his staff? Is there any lack that that sheep will have as the Lord the shepherd takes it to wherever the green pasture is and provides and protects. This is what Jesus is talking about in John ch chapter 10 when he says, I am the good shepherd. I know you by name. I know my own and my own know me. This is the good shepherd who knows you by name. Not, you're not just one of millions and billions 
but he has written your name in his book of life, called you in your baptism, purchased you by his son's blood, and holds you in his flock. And so as we continue to read, what does this mean to be a shepherd of God? Well, we hear that God is enough in any situation, in in, in all circumstances. We can say, "I, I shall not want. But he continues. There's even greater and continued benefits. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. It's that word, that first word, I think that is funny. He says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Sometimes we need to be made to lie down in those green pastures. Because sheep, like sheep, we just wander off and we think we know what is best for us. This pasture over here, the greener grass over there, uh, this little patch over here. God says, no, 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 I need to, to make you and show you where you need to go. And sometimes we need to be brought to the end of ourselves Uh, the end of faith in ourselves and our own abilities. Sometimes our our false idols and trust in the things of this world need to be crushed by God so that we find ourselves saying and going to no one else but God. You've been in those situations in your life where you have turned and said, God, I, I don't know what else to do except fall on my knees and go to you and pray. That's him leading you into greener pastures And and hear me, even working through suffering, oftentimes, God works the most powerfully through the own suffering and in the midst of suffering in our lives. And it's through those moments that he works them for your good and to his glory. For your good in strengthening your faith as you find that you have nowhere else to place your faith except in God. And for his glory. To make his name known. He says that in in this passage in Psalm 23. He leads me in paths of righteousness. Why? For his name's sake. To make his name known. You get to be a part of his fold, but he uses you for his purpose. To make his glory known to the people around you and that he has called you to. And what a, a faithful witness of faith. When that rubber hits the road and in the midst of suffering, we cling to no one but our good shepherd. And there's a lot of suffering going on right now. And there's a lot of people who don't know how to suffer well. That panic when things change are taken from them. When unexpected and unprecedented events happen. But not you, Christian. Because the Lord is your shepherd. And you can look at suffering and even ask the question, how is God strengthening my faith through this? What is he teaching me in this moment? There's some traditions and some resources that say, uh, as we look at shepherding back in this time, David's time as he wrote this psalm, that shepherds had a unique way of getting a sheep to to stay near them. And every now and then there'd be a wayward sheep that would want to go do its own thing. And, And we're told that the shepherd, using his staff, would bring that sheep back that was wandering and take his staff and place it onto one of the sheep's legs. And knowing exactly where, being of great knowledge of the the sheep and their anatomy, would know just exactly where and how to press in such a way to break that leg in just the right spot. He then set it and carry that sheep on his shoulders. You've seen those pictures, right, of Jesus with the sheep on his shoulders, holding his legs, carrying him. And it would be for a number of weeks. As long as it would take for that bone to heal, carry that sheep. It would be with him everywhere he went. Once it was healed, place the sheep by his side. And you know what that sheep would do? Never wander away. And would stay close to his shepherd. And not only wander away, but become a leader for the other sheep and set the example in listening to the shepherd's call and orders. God works in the midst of even of suffering. And can he draw you closer even through difficult moments? Absolutely. And we know that God works through suffering because it's through the greatest suffering that he brought you into his flock. We heard in John chapter 10, he's the good shepherd, but he's unlike any other shepherd because what does he do? 
He lays down his life for the sheep. He did that when he went to the cross. And he suffers. And see, the rest of the world and those that gathered around the cross that day looked at that suffering, that pain, that agony, the, the nails through the hands and the feet, the blood running down his head, the gasps for air, and they said, you've lost. You're suffering. Where's your victory? Where's your God? Yet God is accomplishing exactly what he wills and wins the victory of salvation for you and the forgiveness of sins through that suffering. And that journey to that suffering for your sake begins in the manger. When Jesus came for that mission for which he was called to grow and be that shepherd and to lay down his life for the sheep. And we eagerly await this. The celebration, the arrival, the promise kept of God on that first Christmas day. And because of his suffering and his work through our suffering, we can confidently say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you, my good shepherd, are with me. <clears throat> your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You are sheltered by the shepherd the good shepherd who has laid down his life for you so that you may live. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue now as we join together as one flock singing our response hymn. Please stand as together we go to God, our Father, and our Good Shepherd with our prayers. Our petitions this evening will uh, each end with me saying, Jesus is our shepherd, and the congregation responding, keep us safe in your care. Lord and Savior, in this Advent season, move us by your Spirit to repent of our sinful, wandering ways. Guide us according to your word that we might walk in your footsteps and follow your path of love and compassion for those around us. Jesus, our shepherd, keep us safe in your care. Lord and Savior, lead us to be bold witnesses to those who are lost and who do not yet know you as shepherd and Lord. We pray that you will, by your spirit, continue to seek and to save the lost through the witness of our words and our works of love. Jesus, our shepherd, keep us safe in your care. Lord and Savior, we look forward to that eternal day when we will gather with all the saints and praise you forever for the salvation that you won for us by your death and resurrection. Help us, especially during this Advent season, to anticipate with joy your second Advent when we will live with you forever. Jesus, our shepherd, keep us safe in your care. We pray these things in your name, Good Shepherd. Amen. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Who forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
The benediction this evening, that is the blessing that we are sent with by the Lord, is from Revelation chapter 7 and Hebrews chapter 13. Who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with every good, everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. Well, it's been great to be with you this evening uh, and an honor to join you. It's always an encouragement to visit other congregations and see other believers and to always know that we're never alone as we gather and worship in one place. The, uh, the body of believers gathers around the world and, and worships just as we do and puts their trust in Jesus the shepherd. And we await his arrival this Christmas and then certainly eagerly await his arrival again when he comes as the King of, King, uh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And do we have... We have an update uh, from Pastor Pat, too, via Zoom, so we'll turn things over to him. All right, Pastor, you're live again, my friend. Your hotel room looks similar, but it looks like the A little bit messier in the bed, though. That's okay. Give us an update, Chris. God is good all the time. All, all the time, time, God is, is good. good. Everything is going very well. Um, the uh, doctors on uh, Monday looked things over. Uh, kidney function is good. Um, I'm working now to 
to get a little bit more fluid off. Uh, they had to pump me full of fluids for the surgery and um, I'm still retaining some of that, uh, quite a bit of that. So uh, they're working on getting that off and um, that's improving and uh, I'll see them again tomorrow and things are going well. The only real pain I have is just really around the incision and that's not a whole lot. So feeling really good and um, looking forward to being released, but I got to stick around here. They're still tweaking medication levels and making sure everything's operating correctly. So um, it's going to be a little bit, but um, things are good and things are improving because God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. I long to see you all. I miss all of you and uh, looking forward to uh, sharing Christmas with you and, um, and afterwards. So um, patience is a virtue and we're all learning it. Um, I've got a procedure on the 23rd to remove a stint that is between uh, my body and the new kidney. That connection uh, had to be stinted so that it was allowed to heal completely. So they have to remove that stint and they'll have to remove the, the staples that are holding my incision together. And so I'm, after that, I should be released. Um, whether that's me coming home on the 23rd or me coming home on the morning of the 24th, I'm not exactly sure yet. So somewhere in there is what I'm suspecting, unless something goes horribly wrong before then, which the way that God's answering prayer, I can't imagine, but it's still in his hands. And how's your niece doing? Uh, she is doing very well. Um, she said she feels better than when she had her tonsils out. So, um, so why, why tonsils cause you more problems than losing a kidney, I don't know, but doing well. Great, great news. Thank you, Pastor. All right. God bless all. Merry Christmas. from Pastor Pat. Were there some announcements from an elder? There were at the first service. Yeah, do you want to give some? Uh, just a few announcements. Yep. Um, hey, Chris? Yes? Can you get the mic? I can. <coughs> a little up, right? Press and hold the bottom right down, down below. Got it. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder that uh, we're going to sign up for Christmas Eve service. So if you haven't done that, please do so. And if you need me to do it, I will be in the back to do that after service. Um, also, the giving tree is out there. It has a few ornaments left. So if you want to grab one of those and help out, that, help out with that, that would be awesome. What's that? I can't hear you. We'd like the items back by Sunday. We would like the items back by Sunday. And the address labels for the shut-ins are on the usher counter right to the right when you leave church. God's blessings to you. Merry Christmas.